once again, my dear viewers, welcome back to the Big FM hashtag, the Blue Mag English Edition, your independent favorite, an initiative of Big FM and Hangama Artists Allowed. And so today in this episode, we have another wonderful singer from Mumbai, and she is Alia, aka Jali. So hi, Alia. Welcome to hashtag the Blue Mic English Edition. Hi, Jan. How are you? I'm good. What about you? I'm good. Thanks. So, all right, Alia, it'll be great to hear from you, you know, about yourself, your music and what you do. So, uh, my artist name is Jhalli. And uh, as many of you know, Jhalli means kind of like a crazy, wild, free-spirited girl. It means other things too. It means kind of like dresses badly and like, you know, stupid. But I choose to look at the good parts yeah. of it. And um, so, yeah, my name is Jhalli. I'm a musician. I write my own songs and compose them. And I've been singing and writing music since I was 13. So actually before that, but like actually with a guitar when I was 13. Um, and yeah, I just believe that what Jali stands for is just being yourself, um, however weird or like crazy that might seem to other people. And, um, and yeah, just do what makes you comfortable, do what makes you happy and uh, forget what everybody else says. <laughs> so tell us about Jali, you know, how, how did you accept and you know proudly reclaimed its power um so i my parents used to call me jhalli when i was a kid uh, you know and uh, they basically were like why are you dressing like that why are you wearing these old loose boys clothes i would take like shirts from my dad and wear them over everything because i thought it was really cool and i still think it's really cool <laughs> but um so she was basically like um like, why are you doing that? And I was like, because I like it. And that's kind of the origin. I was like, I'm going to reclaim this name that is Jhalli and um, just make it into something cool and something defiant instead of something that is talked down upon. All right. So Jhalli, you started playing at, uh, you started playing guitar at the age of 30 and, you know, started writing down songs at when you're in fifth grade. So I yeah. think you have a lot of experiences when it comes to songwriting. Mm -hmm. So we would love to know, like, where do you draw your inspirations from, you know, when it comes to songwriting and who are your major influences when it comes to your music? When it comes to songwriting, um, it's hard to think on the spot like this, but maybe the Beatles. Um, I really like John Lennon's writing style. Um, Amy Winehouse, Amy was brilliant. She um, just wrote straight from the heart and her lyrics were so witty and so biting. I really like Alex Turner from, uh, um, yeah, from Arctic Monkeys. I like Arctic Monkeys um, lyrics and stuff as well. Um, Hosier, very deep songwriting. But, you know, as I, as I grew up, this changed. This is all now, like what's coming to mind. But when I was young, it was like, like Hannah Montana and stuff. Like I was just a kid, I was just watching music and I was like, I also want to make music, you know? So, um, and then in terms of like, inspiration in the world around me. I started writing in fifth grade because my friends and I saw this dead frog on the playground and we were like, oh my God, it, it's coming alive, it's coming alive and because it, it started moving a bit. And I was like, that's a great song name, it's coming alive. And so we made a, a song at like in, in fifth grade about, it was not about the frog, but it was about the concept of coming alive, you know? And yeah, ever since then, that's, that's how it started, um, yeah. All right, so when you were in college, like, you know, were, you were part of the female a cappella group called The Sirens. So tell us about The Sirens. Uh, the Sirens was awesome. Uh, four years of college, it was me and um, maybe 12 to 14 other girls over the years. And um, it was amazing to just go sing with other women. It felt like we were in a, a choir or like a, you know, it was, it was like a sisterhood, it was amazing. And uh, we just got together like two, three times a week and we'd make music and sing. And, and it really taught me a lot about reading music. It taught me about arranging harmonies and um, taught me about using different parts of my voice and how to sing with a group and just how to look alive when you're on stage and like not have stage fright. Um, so yeah, it taught me a lot and I love, I love all my sirens, they're amazing. So, all right. So for now, let's go into performance. Um, so this song is called Let Me Be Your Girl. 
and uh, I wrote it, I think, right before COVID lockdown or like a few months before, before COVID lockdown. And it's about uh, that intense feeling you get when you first have a crush on someone where it feels like consuming, you know, like you're infatuated with them and you're just like, I just want to go up to this person and be like, listen, I think we're soulmates, but you don't do that because you're not creepy. Um, and so <laughs> that's what the song is about. It's about... Um, just saying what you want to say to someone that you just met and are like obsessed with and um yeah it's it's what i what i we wish we could say to our crushes but we don't so we just listen to the song and feel sad in our rooms anyway so this is let me be your girl <clears throat> than most will ever get. It's not easy finding love in this throwaway world. But darling, I could love you if you let me be your girl. Friends turn into strangers and strangers into lovers. I know that you're trying danger and the changes under covers maybe he could never feel you never made my toes curl but i could fulfill you if you let me be your girl with everybody else i've always felt a sense of distance i can tell we have a thing or two in common but when i look into those eyes they look just like a mirror like i know you from a time and place forgotten i can make you happy and your dream come true and i know i could be so much more than a friend to you. So before we get too busy and before we life unfurls, let's just fall in love tonight. So you'll be my girl. Wow, beautiful. What a beautiful voice, Jali. You know, I really like that song. So yeah, coming back to about yourself you know so tell us what your takeaways during, during your time in LA like you know how did you use your experiences during in LA and now back here in India mm -hmm. so um LA was great because I got to study music in um in another country for five years and it's a it's a country where so many of the greatest artists that we know the western artists at least were born and it was really amazing I studied four years at USC um I it was mostly songwriting and then I started to get into different genres of music. Um, so before that, I was I was just trained in Western classical. But when I went to the US, I trained in um, musical theater, jazz, just like pop, blues, so many, so many different genres that once you learn how to sing them, um, you it just opens up a whole new part, a whole new style of your voice. And then you can kind of use that in your own music, you know, so um so yeah, I, I learned all of that. And, and then after USC, I went um, to Musicians Institute for a year, which is like right in the center of Hollywood Boulevard. It's, it's a weird location, but um, the school was amazing. I learned, I, I started to play a lot with my band. I had this uh, this indie rock band called Jhali and the Jungle Jukebox. And we just go around LA to like really iconic locations. Sometimes like the Whiskey A Logo, we um, sold that out. Then we went to... Um, Silver Lake Lounge, um, the Live House in Hollywood, all of these different venues. And uh, yeah, and we play our songs. We play some of my originals and some covers. And it was a really good time. And it, it, I think it helped me get over my the stage fright that anyone gets when performing. Um, it's so like I, I just became really comfortable on stage, really um, explored kind of my identity as a performer. And so, yeah, I learned a lot in LA, everything from songwriting to production to performance um it was really good so coming to your ep why should i like you know you released that in honor of your grandmother 
So mm-hmm. once again, congratulations on your EP. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Tell yeah. us about it. So like you said, I wrote it in um, kind of for, dedicated to my grandmother in a way because why should I is her catchphrase and um, she's she's just a really badass, hilarious, sweet, loving woman. But, you know, back in the day to be badass was not exactly a desired quality in a woman. Um, and so <laughs> she had to, it's still really not, but um, so for her it was especially hard because she got married so young at, I think, 15 and um, just to adjust to her new family and, and to kind of stand up for herself in certain situations. Like um, there's a story that she told that her, she, ma, her parents-in-law didn't want her daughter to get an education because they were like, what's the point of educating a daughter? You know, she's just going to go get married anyway. And, um, and it, you know, it was hard for her to stand up to her parents because it, they could have very easily just kicked her out of the house and she would have nowhere to go, you know, back in the day. And so she, um, but she argued, she was like, no, absolutely. My daughter is going to get the same um, education and the same rights that I was denied for being, you know, a girl or whatever. So it was amazing how she, she, she stood up. And in that time, there was such a huge thing. Now it's kind of common sense. Okay. Educate your girls with your voice. But back then it was kind of revolutionary. And, you know, because she did that, my, my dad and my aunt, her daughter are so successful today because she, she, argued for it and she kind of stood up for it so I kind of wanted to dedicate it to that spirit that that of like rebellious women and rebellious people everywhere just people who who dare to ask why should I when when society tells them blindly to do something or to follow something you know so yeah that's why why should I so coming to your music well it has got this uh, playful kind of vibe you know it's like you're saying take me seriously at your own peril are we right about this that's a great way of putting it. Yeah, I never, I never thought about that, but definitely, um, I, I think I, I use humor a lot. Like eighty percent of the things I say are jokes and sarcastic, and people usually don't get it. They just think I'm being weird. But it's, I just, I don't think there's any point of taking life too seriously, right? I feel like, um, like I've spent so much of my life just being sad and angry and insecure and stuff about things that were way beyond my control. And now I'm like, I'm just gonna like write about things that I that are meaningful to me and um, I'm going to write about it in a way that's humorous and that 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 kind of um is biting and a bit sarcastic I hope and and yeah and, and that's kind of that's a good way to put it yeah so all right Jali we've talked about your music your EP your songwriting and everything about you so now we go into another section where we have another budding artist here with us and she's an amazing 14 years old from Chennai and she's a really beautiful singer who have recently released her song called I'm Tired. So please welcome Trisha. Hi, Trisha. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So all right, Trisha, you have any question? You can interact with Jali now. Yeah, I wanted to ask, like, when did you get into music? Like, when was your, like, um, when did you start, like, singing? Uh, when I was really, as soon as I could start to talk, pretty much. Um, not well, might I add, but my parents thankfully encouraged it. Um, and then I, I think I joined the school choir when I was eight, seven or eight. Um, and so that's why I discovered I really love to sing. I have a very high pitched voice, which is, makes me a soprano. Um, and, and so, yeah, I just started to sing with the choir and, and then got more and more into music after that. Oh, cool. That's cool. Did you have like um, like an inspiration for your like recent song, like your new song that came out? Um, which one? Because there's there's five on the EP. Um, the one you sang. The, oh, the one I sang. Let me be a girl. Yeah, it was inspired by this girl in um, that I knew in in college, and like I met once, and I was like, oh my god, you're amazing. So yeah, that was she was my inspiration. So, uh, what are some of the challenges you think of singing like English music in India? I think this is the best time. Um, in the history of this country, maybe to be doing in English music because there's finally, um, you can reach your audience through streaming platforms and stuff. So there's definitely good sides to it too. I don't just want to be like, oh, it's all bad. Um, but that being said, there are, it is kind of a more niche market. 
um, and like the the just the people who understand or relate to or listen to English music um, are naturally just going to be less just because of how the the country is structured, you know, and the languages we speak. Um, so I do think like I actually my next two songs I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, it's fine. Um, my next two songs are going to be in Hindi. Um, that's what we're planning, and I've just started writing in Hindi because I feel like. Like I love writing in English, and I don't think I'm I'm ever gonna stop. But um, but I I do want to write songs that that more people can relate to because music is not just about, you know, like how you, the language you think. And I think I think you should write in all languages that you speak. I even wrote like a Hindi French song. It's like half French, half Hindi, um, because I speak the languages, and so I'm like, why not, you know? And um, so yeah, I do think that there are challenges, but I think it's it's a good time to be into English music now when you can you have some control and some distribution methods you know what about you what do you think what do you think about it yeah no no I was just gonna say like that's cool that you mixed Hindi and French because like those are two languages I never thought like you can sing like in the same yeah. so thanks cool. I mean honestly it sounds great I was surprised too I was like why does this sound so good these languages are like they're good they're meant for each other <laughs> yeah cool um, well, I'm excited to hear your song, uh, I'm Tired. Do you want to play it? Yeah. Staying up late night with eyes wide as I stare at the ceiling Wondering when the time has passed by The moonlight lay drives walking down an empty road on a Trisha, thank you so much. And uh, Jali, do you want to say anything more to Trisha? Um, I think the melody of the song was really nice. I like, I can still remember. I'm tired. Da, 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 da. I think they're both very like melody um, uh, centric artists. Like, you know, their songs, you can sing them a cappella and they still have a very distinct melody. It's not just like one note or two notes generally. Um, so yeah, it's good. I really like your melody making. So thanks. Thanks for playing. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you so much, Trisha. And looking forward to hear more of your songs. 
very soon. Thank you so much. So, Jali, I hope you've enjoyed your time with the budding artists. I have. That was awesome. My, there's like so much talent in this country. I'm glad like platforms like yours are helping you know people get more of a, a place to share their music. That's great. That's true. So before you go, how about another performance? So this song is called Hurricane, and um, it's about this version is going to sound very different from the recorded master. But the song is about a lot of things. Um, it's about kind of embracing the chaos within yourself and uh, finding power in finding power in um, in your own natural self. Like, cause like nature, which can be calm and beautiful and loving, um, it can also, like a hurricane or an earthquake, be destructive and destroy all the bullshit. I mean, not all the bullshit, so human life, go. it's sad. But I mean, metaphorically speaking, it is a symbolic thing, you know, to destroy all the, the lies and all the kind of just bad stuff going on around you. Um, you need to be strong, you need to be like Kalima, like a hurricane, you know, like destroying evil, um, so to speak. So that's what the song is about. <clears throat> Why do we fight our own nature? I so when I was younger that seven sinks deep into your stomach you don't want to let it be seen boxed into concrete prisons I was afraid of my fire shoving anger deep into your liver that's the way things have always been the chaos fits my restless soul beautiful performance thank Thanks. you so much Thanks. Jali for that wonderful performance so once again thank you so much Jali and thank you for taking your time to sit down and have a chat with us so once again we wish you the very best thanks so much Jen thanks for having me this was super fun